Agricultural areas of the region of Lublin are an important mainstay of life for many plant and animal species. Properly conducted agricultural management practices promote their conservation. Such an agriculture supports biodiversity, but biodiversity itself can also be beneficial for the farmers. Is it worth investing in biodiversity? Biodiversity provides a number of benefits to the farmer called ecosystem services. Maintaining a high diversity of weeds in the crop while keeping their number under control doesn't need to cause yield losses. It can even result in a number of other positive outcomes. It is believed that in a canopy of cereals, abundance of weeds up to 30 pieces per square meter doesn't cause any yield loss of crops. And what exactly are the ecosystem services? Ecosystem services are divided into four basic types – provisioning, supporting, regulating and cultural. If we take provisioning services, some wheat species may provide food or they can provide valuable raw material for the cosmetic and pharmaceutical industry, as well as valuable genes useful in plant breeding. Biodiversity is also crucial for various processes that occur in agroecosystem, such as nutrient cycling, water circulation and maintaining soil fertility. The presence of weeds in an ecosystem increases the aesthetic value of the agricultural landscape. Maintaining proper soil fertility determines the yield of crops. Quantity and quality of organic matter introduced to soil contributes substantially to soil fertility. Soil fertility, in turn, has a significant impact on the biological activity and diversity of soil organisms. Earthworms are one of the most important invertebrates in the soil. There is only up to four species of these invertebrates in the arable lands of Poland. Nevertheless, their biomass can reach an impressive number. In each hectare there may be up to 400 kilograms of earthworms. Earthworms feed on soil and dead organic matter, converting it into coprolites, the excreta of earthworms which produce soil. They are able to process 4 to 10 tons of soil annually. To help these useful organisms, we have to maintain a neutral pH of the soil, apply manure and compost to the soil. The introduction of a simplified or no-till tillage system is also beneficial compared to plowed tillage system. Every farmer should be interested in who works for him, I mean soil organisms. At first glance, you always see well-known earthworms, often seen after rain. In contrast, other organisms of huge populations cannot be seen with the naked eye. To see them, you need a special optic equipment. Although they cannot be seen, you can smell them. The smell of freshly ploughed soil is derived from actinomycetes, associated with one of many groups of microorganisms that occur in the soil. In addition to bacteria, they form the largest group working for the farmer. Although it is hard to believe, in one gram of soil, which is in an amount less than will fit in a teaspoon, over a billion soil organisms are present. The number of species in one gram of soil is more than 10,000.
different organisms perform various tasks, contributing to the improvement of plant growth and development conditions. At the same time, the abundance of plants promotes greater diversity of soil fauna. What is the impact of plant diversity on soil fauna? The variety of crops, as well as intercrops, including crops as important as beans, positively influences the diversity of soil microflora and microfauna. Also, weeds have a positive effect on soil fertility. Weeds, such as the wild mustard, have a deep root system and thus they can crumble the soil and make it less compacted. Weeds are not only a headache for farmers, but they can also have a positive impact on crops. Maintaining high species diversity of weeds while their population is kept at a low number, that is below the threshold of economic harmfulness, can promote the growth and yielding of crops. This is, among other things, due to allelophatic influence of weeds on the crop. Allelopathy consists in a positive or negative impact of chemical substances secreted by some organisms on the growth and development of other organisms. Weeds can stimulate the development of the crop. Lamb quarters, which I hold in my hand, can stimulate the growth of potato. Viola arvensis can stimulate the growth of rye and chamomile can stimulate the growth of wheat. But also the cultivated plant itself may have allelopathic effects on weeds. Buckwheat can limit abundance of Elimus repens, while incorporation of rye, which is sown in the autumn and incorporated to soil in spring, may reduce weed infestation of a field. Weed fields are also a food source and place of existence and reproduction of many beneficial species of animals, including pollinators and enemies of pests. The diversity of soil organisms and plants, as well as the diversity of invertebrates, have the beneficial effect for the farmer. The pressure from crop pests on crops can be reduced by proper maintenance and support of beneficial invertebrates that live on farm fields. Large insects such as the green grasshopper or field cricket are often abundant on cultivated fields. They are predators of many pests, but they are also a basis of diet of many birds of prey, such as the harrier or white stork. Ground beetles and many other invertebrate species specialize in hunting other insects, including those considered to be pests of crops. A common pest present on a variety of crop plants are aphids. We are in the field of organic cabbage. Unfortunately, a large number of aphids appeared here, which strongly limits the yield of vegetables. Fortunately, the organisms that are natural enemies of the aphids, such as ladybugs, ground beetles and numerous species of birds, 
begin to appear in here. They are able to limit aphid population so that it does not exceed the threshold of economic harmfulness. Spiders are one of the most important groups of predators. They have a very significant role in the control of pests. Spiders are numerous in rural ecosystems. A research conducted in selected types of crops across Europe indicate that they can reach densities up to 600 individuals per square meter on agricultural lands. Spiders of arable lands are the most common spiders in our country. They live in agricultural areas which cover more than 50% of Poland. These include a family such as the orb weaver spiders, Wolf spiders and spiders of the Linifida family. Orb weaver spiders weave their circular webs among the stalks of crops. Wolf spiders live on the ground and chase their prey. Spiders of the Linifida family are very small, about the size of one millimeter. They can both build webs as well as hunt actively. Spiders are polyphagous predators. Most of them are predators that are nutritionally non-specialized with a very wide spectrum of prey. The main types of prey are insects many of which are considered to be pests. These are primarily aphids and flies, Oscinella frit or Cecidomeide flies, which are considered key European pests. The presence of pollinators is crucial for the yielding of many plant species. With a large number of these beneficial insects in the landscape, the farmer can obtain higher yields of crops. Canola is pollinator dependent at around 30%. This means that one third of the yield is produced by pollinating insects. Given the huge acreage of this crop occurring in the country and multiply this acreage by one ton of seeds per hectare, which is obtained through the work of pollinating insects, you will get a huge sum. Those are the benefits achieved through the work of pollinating insects in plantations of canola. This work is done not only by the honeybee that lives in hives, but also by many wild species inhabiting different habitats. Crop pollination is one of the most important and one of the cheapest factors affecting the yield. In many cases, without pollination, there would be no yield at all. Worldwide, about 35% of the crop is pollinated by apida insects, and 78% of the main species of plants require pollination by bees. 
Worldwide, there are approximately 25,000 of species of Apida insects, of which 450 species live in Poland. The species found in Poland are grouped in seven taxonomic groups. The most numerous is the family of bees, which includes honeybee and bumblebee. In Poland, there are about 36 species of bumblebees and cuckoo bumblebees, which are nest parasites. The number of honeybees in Poland is not sufficient. It is estimated that the Polish population of honeybee is about 1,300,000 of bee families, and there should be twice that number. In many parts of the country there is a problem with pollination of entomorphous plants. Therefore, growers are increasingly using alternative pollinators, such as bumblebees and red mason bees, the artificial nesting place of which we can see next to me. Bumblebees were initially used to pollinate greenhouse crops because they are effective in the pollination of crops in close places, as greenhouses. The honeybee doesn't like confined spaces and doesn't perform any work in them. Bumblebees, on the other hand, do well in these spaces. They were initially used to pollinate tomatoes. Nowadays, all greenhouse crops that require pollination are pollinated by bumblebees. Biodiversity conservation of Apida family is inextricably linked with the protection of wild plants and crops. If there are no plants that provide nectar and pollen to the bees, there are also no bees. This also works the other way. If in a given area bees become extinct, for example as a result of poisoning by plant protection products, the annual plants will not give seed, and probably in the next growing season they will vanish from the area. Not only the blooming canola, buckwheat and apple, but also the availability of other flowering plants in other periods of time are needed for the survival of pollinating insects. Diversity of flowering plant species in different parts of the landscape provides a lot of nectar flow and pollen for bees and other pollinators. Weeds are also a valuable source of nectar flow and pollen. The presence of weeds in crops is an extremely important element of enriching food base for apida insects. Particularly important element is not to perform any weed management when the number of weeds is low, below the threshold of harmfulness. Higher and more stable crop yields of better quality can be obtained by the farmer through maintaining high biodiversity and reducing or eliminating the use of pesticides. At the end, due to lower production costs, the financial condition of the farm is improved. Therefore, while protecting the nature, farmers care not only about the plants and animals, but also provide tangible benefits for themselves.